you're welcome. And we're very pleased about our subject today because of course, the Sheikh Zayed Book Award is one of the premier prizes in the world, working in its 15th year now. We're pleased with the program. We're looking forward to what's coming up in the 2020 round. Sawed and Robert are going to start us off by giving us a little bit of a background on what they do, what their particular roles in this are. Sawed is a translator primarily. Robert is a publisher in Toronto. Sawed, will you start us off and tell us how you came to do your work and, and what you're doing? I started out as a literary translator primarily because I'm not a native speaker of Arabic, so I fell in love with the Arabic language and its literature. And originally, my whole sort of you know focus was trying to dispel stereotypes that people have of Arabs or um, people who speak Arabic on the African continent. But as you know, I've progressed in my career, I've come to realize it's more just about bringing great literature from one part of the world to you know another part of the world and letting stories across borders um, in my career i have focused primarily on female authors uh, just because i tend to gravitate more towards writing um, by females thank you now robert will you speak to us a little bit about the work that you're doing in toronto at bookland your press i'd like to say that i have a passion for publishing books written by culturally diverse authors and indigenous authors, both from Canada and from around the world. As a book publisher, I personally believe that the books we publish are expressions of who we are, the values we hold and the choices we make to reach our goals. Would you say, Robert, that the, the culture in which you work, the Canadian culture, has an inherent sense of multiculturalism that enables you to be the ranging press that you are, is that is it of help that the society is receptive to this? Well, in Canada, we pride ourselves in our cultural diversity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we consider multiculturalism as an integral part of our society. Uh, the books uh, we publish at Book One Press, uh, they do reflect this point of view. I see publication of Arab literature through translation as a way for American and Canadian readers to discover, uh, learn about, and connect with the new culture. I can say to you from the United States that we do see more and more interest in translated work, which is fantastic because for many years the States was considered quite resistant to work from other cultures. Um, I think that our politics have actually helped this in an ironic backflip, if you will. People have become concerned about the isolationism and the nationalism they may feel here, and they're actually looking for more from other parts of the world, which is great. Um, so what? Talk to me a little bit. When you look at both challenges and opportunities right now, what do you see? What What is, from the translator's viewpoint, what sticks out in your mind is perhaps one of the biggest stumbling blocks you're running into. Compared to a lot of my colleagues working from other languages, say Korean or Swedish, translating into English, whose countries have a very robust infrastructure to supporting you know, literature and translation mm -hmm. and seeing the benefit of it. Unfortunately, the opportunities for funding for Arabic to English literary translators, I honestly can just count on one hand. Unfortunately, as Arab authors don't have much representation, they're not getting the same sort of opportunities as other authors, you know, their counterparts working from from other languages. Uh, let me get one here for you, Sawad, too. Um, the, I, I love this question because I'm fascinated by the, the multiplicity of dialects inside the Arabic world, something that we don't think of from the outside. Do you translate different Arabic dialects and what kind of challenges does this present to a translator? Yes, definitely. I think a majority of translators working from Arabic inevitably are working wide range of dialects unless they have consciously made the decision to only translate Egyptian dialect, you know, Masri or Shami. Um, but yeah, so the way, for example, um, the book I, I uh, did of Saudi Sanusi, it's, um, it's called Fi'aran Ummi Hissa, which is translated as Mama Hissa's Mice. It's um, a Kuwaiti novel. So prior to translating that novel, I watched, you know, hours upon hours of um, Kuwaiti soap operas just because I had not lived in Kuwait myself. And um, I have a few Kuwaiti friends, but I wasn't as well versed in that dialect as, you know, I speak Shem. Like I studied in Jordan. That's, you know, 
the sort of dialect that I am used to speaking. Robert, I am interested because I noticed when I started learning about Bookland and, and what you're doing in Toronto, you're not based as a, a children's publisher per se. And yet your two acquisitions um, so far from the Sheikh Zayed Award have been books for children. Atlas and I Dream of Being a Concrete Mixer. Speak to us a little bit about the position of children's, young people's literature in your press and in how you see Arabic coming into the Canadian culture. So according to BookNet Canada, and the BookNet Canada is an agency that tracks the book sales throughout the Canadian book market. Um, in 2019, uh, there were about 54 million books have been sold in Canada. Uh, now, let's take a look at the market share for different categories, which I find fascinating. Total 2019 sales of books for young readers accounted for the majority of the Canadian market share. It wow. just over 40%. Wow. Let's look at the numbers on the French Canadian market on the French language side. The, surprisingly, the picture is very similar. In the French Canadian market, books for young readers also had the biggest portion of sales in 2019. They accounted for roughly 39% of the trade market. And uh, I believe these numbers are clear and they clearly understand how important children's and young adult literature book segment is important for the Canadian market. It's been a wonderful conversation too. I'm sorry that our time is already up. It seems like it just flew right by. Um, I want to thank our audience, particularly for these good questions. I'm pointing here because I see them at that point on my screen. Um, really fine questions. Sawad, your comments were wonderful. Robert, thank you for so much of a grounding in what you're doing.